In this video, I have the huge honor of hosting Elijah Kellogg, author of Star Breach, the sci-fi skirmish miniature game. Thanks, Elijah. It's really an honor to have you here today. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Andrea. I've always appreciated your input in the game and love that you built the whole battle scribe for the game, which is really cool. Seems like people are using that. Have you gotten good feedback on that? Yeah, I keep having feedback about Battlescribe and uh, people seem to like it. It's not the easiest thing to install because uh, it's not natively supported by Battlescribe data, uh, the main data repository. Uh, so there is some tweaking to do on the app to actually make it working. But I think with my latest video, probably many of the people that weren't able to install it now have a uh, grasp and I really understand on how to do it so yeah and thanks thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity to do it i think it's um it's a great tool and uh, the game deserves a tool to be played more because it's a great game <laughs> well th thank you thank you for doing that yeah and it's really cool to be on your show this is really nice yeah, thank you thank you it's, it's an honor for me really okay so let's jump straight uh, into the first question which is uh Tell, sure. tell us about you a bit more and how you got into the hobby. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so for me, it started really um, back in fifth grade. I was in a uh, was in my in in class, and we had a rainy day. One of those days where you don't get to go outside much; you have to stay in. Yeah. And it ended up being a rainy day turned into a whole rainy week. <laughs> And so the, so the teacher became a bit desperate and she invited us to bring, you know, different toys or books or magazines from home that we could share during the lunch hour while the, while the rain was going through town. And um, one boy, he brought a, I think it was a GW like catalog. At this time, it was like 1999, 1998. And it was just... And, and he brought it, it was his older brothers, and he opened it up. I just was totally enthralled. I thought it was amazing. I was just like, what is this? I've never <laughs> seen this before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was really excited, you know, like, yeah, what, like, like, like there's fantasy and there's, and there's sci-fi, and I was just, I was hooked. I didn't know that I loved that until I saw those pictures and I said, yes, this is all I want to do yeah. for my hobby the rest of my life. This is so cool. Um, you know, I, I always liked sci-fi and fantasy when I was little, but just seeing those models for the first time yeah. really, you know, got me excited. So then I started looking for a store. I had never seen these before. I couldn't even describe it to my parents. I was like, they're like little, they're like this big, and uh, they, they got guns, and they're like, oh, like Green Army Men. And I was like, no, 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 they're like way cooler than that. <laughs> yeah. So I was trying to, so I was trying to explain to them like, you know, this whole hobby. And finally we found a store that was, um, about 20, 30 minutes away from my house. So not too far that, that did, that was selling GW, the GW line. And I mean, we came home with a fantasy set. I think it was like Warhammer. Gosh, that would have been like fifth edition or like fourth edition, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe fifth edition. Yeah. And, uh, and I just, and, and we just ate it up. My brother and I, we opened up the box. He got the orcs. I got empire and we just, <laughs> we were just building. And that was it. That was, that's what really got me going. Yeah. You know, um, uh, recently, a few years ago, I really started branching out. You know, I was, I did a lot of Warhammer fantasy battle and, um, you know, what's funny. I never really got too much into 40 K, but, um, I, really liked fantasy battle and um, really enjoyed eighth edition. And then we got really back into it with eighth edition. And then I was doing also playing ninth age, which is kind of like a, yeah. you know, private, uh, uh, like just, just kind of basically that kept the flank and flank, you know, kind of style war game going with, with the fantasy models. Yeah. And then, Oh, you cool. Um, so you were able to play that, the ninth age for a little bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> love Ninth Age. I I ran Ninth Age tournaments in my in wow. my community, and yeah, we had a grand tournament at one point. We had a two day grand tournament. It was like thirty five players, wow. um, which is I mean for for Ninth yeah. Age is 
Hello. You know, yeah. <laughs> totally, it's, it's totally it, random. It, it, it's a lot, but you know, yeah. there's there's a lot of guys that hang that hung on to their you know old school rank rank and file guys. They didn't want to put them on circle bases. Yeah. They wanted them on the squares. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, anyways, um, you know, I had nothing against AOS. I just kind of was still playing that at the time. I found out about this game, Frostgrave, yeah. that Joseph McCulloch he he put out. And the first year, like the first month he put it out, I picked up a copy because I was looking kind of for something that fit the Mordheim feel. I had all these models and I kind of wanted to do more skirmish games. And have you never played Mordheim? Mordheim. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, oh yes, of course. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I played, played a little bit of that. Um, that one was tough to find other players. You know, it was kind of a yeah. more niche of a game. So I only got, you know, I never really went through a full campaign, but I got lots of little games in. But I really, really fell in love with Westgrave and I, I enjoyed it so much that I started to, um, you know, kind of do it at conventions and get people into it, get people excited about it, because um, it was just happy to help grow the game. I just thought it was a great game. Um, had a lot of exposure. I've I've played or, or witnessed over 200 games of Frostgrave. I mean, I've just wow. <laughs> uh, documented documented games, you know, players who came and played. And so I, I sent a lot of feedback to Joe, and Joe and I kind of emailed back and forth lightly which was cool uh, i don't know if he'll remember that i'm sure he remembers maybe a little bit <laughs> but um, sure i'm really excited to see second second edition coming out and um and uh that when it came out i was really excited to see some of the big changes that i had even mentioned in the first edition like hey we thought of you know this and this and the yeah. spell maybe change this and so i'm a big believer in like living breathing games um you know not just letting it sit in rule don't let it sit that way how can we fix it how can we make it better um so anyways it was really cool to be part of that process well then i started getting into bolt action as well so i was just starting to really branch out i had all these i was getting into these different games yeah. and i started playing x-wing miniature game as well um and we just had a really thriving you know tabletop community where i live and where i lived in southern california mm -hmm. and um it was in 2017 I was going to move back to uh, move out here uh, to where I am now in Southeast Asia. And um, I just knew that where I was headed, there was not going to be any gaming, any formal <laughs> gaming at all. Yeah, and so, so what kind of happened was I said, well, you know, I'd love to still bring some models and maybe I could play with people. I could teach people. But I knew that the, the large scale, you know, six by four, yeah. battle was probably not going to be realistic and so i started to think through well, i'd like to probably maybe invest in some skirmish games and i really loved bolt action at the time i love the the drawing the order dice i think that's brilliant um and i and i and i began to think you know maybe i could make this into like a skirmish level kind of one squad versus another squad like a really zoomed in version of a world war ii firefight and so that became what's now known as NCO. And NCO came out in like 2017. I put it out. And, um, and I was really surprised, free online, and I was really surprised to see how many people kind of were feeling the same thing. They were looking for something similar. And they hopped on. And the internet, in a good way, just tore it apart. And, uh, and so we, so I went back and I fixed it and, you know, we, we worked on it and then the internet tore it apart again and then I worked on it again and now, and, and now it's in a pretty good place. I mean, it's still available for free online as my very first game. And I just found myself as part of the process writing miniature game, how much I just really enjoyed, you know, creating something that people played and that they, that they enjoyed. And so then uh, while I was already in, I'd already landed in Thailand, um, I began future, you know, kind of sci-fi level skirmish games as well. Because at that time, that was um, late 2017, so the new kill team for GW had not come out. Um, there were no signs of it coming out. It was announced, you know, the next year. And so I was like, you know, I'd really like to do something sci-fi skirmish. And I found a store that wasn't too far from my house that had G uh, GW models. And so I was like, oh, this is great. You know, I can, in, in Thailand, not, not here where I live in Myanmar, but in Thailand, I found a store. And so I, uh, 
uh, so I like kind of invested before we moved into Myanmar, a bunch of little models and built these little squads and started planning Starbreach. Yeah. <laughs> what would eventually become yeah. Starbreach. Yeah. At the time, we, I called it Starfall and it was like Starfall for about a year. And then a, children, a children's app called Starfall, like sent a cease and desist <laughs> <laughs> just because just we shared the same name. It was they were particularly worried about the email, like the um, web address. So I was like, whatever. So we chased. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I was already. I was like out of country. I don't want to go into a loss. I basically <laughs> just changed the name as they requested, and we turned it into Starbreach. And <laughs> and uh, you know, again, I put it out in multiple versions. The internet chewed it up, loved it, loved parts of it, spat out the rest, and I took the rest that we spat out and I fixed it up, and we just kept working on it, and it eventually got to um, a good point in. I would say like mid 2018, but at that time, then GW kind of announced a uh, kill team and there was a big, everyone kind of jumped and I said, well, that's okay. That's not, you know, I'm not looking for thousands of players to play my game. I was just happy to make a game that I could play that I enjoyed. <laughs> um, and, and, but you know what, it, it, it continued to grow momentum all the way through 2018 as well as 2019. And, um, and then, I would say like, yeah, about half, uh, halfway through 2019, it really got to get serious. We really start to see a jump and a rise in players. And it, it, the game had kind of gotten to a point where, you know, I th felt like, well, maybe, maybe we should maybe put this in print. That would be kind of fun, like a, like a hardcover, just special edition, something fun for hardcore players, nothing official. And, um, and so around that time, I came back from the States, uh, came back to the States and, um, I wanted to do that. And I started a little Kickstarter to do that. And I was also kind of showing star breach around at different conventions, local conventions. And it was at one of the local conventions that I ran into Chris. Yeah. Um, and Chris runs, you know, slow death games. He's got his own private game company that he was kind of growing and he was so patient. He, he sat through a whole another game waiting to demo my game. And I was like, who is this? Who is this guy? <laughs> uh, so he's, he, he's, he's sitting there with his friend waiting. And then, and then they sat down and played and, and he finished and he said, Hey man, I really love this game. And I said, Oh, that's great. I'm glad you like it. And he said, no, I, you know, I, I run a game publishing company. I'd love to publish your game. And I said, Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so, you know, at first I didn't really, I just said, you know, it, it, I said, I don't know, you know, it's, it's, I'm just, it's out on the internet for free. I don't know if it's going to make money for you. I have no idea, you know, and he said, well, you know, let's just talk about it and let's think about it. And so sure. And over, over conversations, we eventually decided to put out the, the book and I, I didn't, I did put out a little small batch of like 60 hardcover books. They're floating around there in the universe somewhere, <laughs> but then he took over the project and then kickstarted the, the paperback, kind of the mass print paperback. And that's what players have today. And, and uh, we got the PDF and all that. And so, yeah, the game continues to gain traction and, and I still don't know why <laughs> I think it's amazing. I think it's amazing. You know, I didn't, I didn't start, I didn't start building rules to, to yeah. do this for yeah. a living or to find a job. It was just a hard, yeah. it was a part of the hobby. Yeah, yeah. Let me say something about this. Um, you know, I was in indie games even before Star Breach, of course. But Star Breach made the difference in my mind mm, because, first of all, it's free, and I never thought that a free game can be this good. You know, and second, it made me realize the huge difference with more known games, and the difference is that indie games and in particular Star Breach, which is free, can be growing and improving together with the community. And you have been really good at this. Uh, you have always been there, ready to listen to players and uh, adapt your game and what people like and not liked. This is something unique of indie games, uh, but more than ever we Star Breach. And, you know, uh, other big companies are lost in thinking about how to make money rather than listening to players. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think there's a freedom. There's a freedom, you know, with uh, with it being free that I was able to update it, you know, on a month to month yeah. basis at, at some points. You know, I could make quick changes and it was really easy. It was this living, breathing. You know, I was hesitant. I said, I don't know if I want to put it 
in a paperback because then it's stuck, <laughs> you know, and it's like, you know, in this kind of like yeah. place where, and I know it's, I know it's not perfect. I know it needs to keep growing, you know, um, I, you know, it's just, but it was really cool. I think what's neat is, you know, the having it in paperback form, having it in an official deluxe format, um, put, put some professionalism to it. Um, a really funny, funny thing about that actually was I was really against it. I thought, you know, I'll just keep it free. And somebody told, and there was a guy who wrote to me and he said, uh, something that really changed my mind about that. He said, you know, he said, I did your game and I've been sitting on it for three months and I can't get anybody to play it (laughs) because he said, because it's free. Yeah. He said, we sit at the table and we play miserable games <laughs> that we don't like. Yeah. And we're home, we're home brewing, we're, we're, we're home brewing rules all day. We can't, we can't enjoy the game at all yeah. because, but we're playing it because we paid for it. <laughs> he said, that was a great point. You I, know? I he can said, totally he said, relate to that. I, I can totally relate to that. It, it does make sense, even if it doesn't, but <laughs> it, it is yeah, what it is. I mean, yeah. He, he just said, you know, peop, we invest our money and we're playing things we don't want to play, but then I have something free that I know is good. It's in my hand. I want to play it, but we won't play it because we didn't invest in it. Yeah. You know, just a little, you know, it's like, you know, it's like where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Yeah. Right. And that, that order is true, right? Like where you put your money, where you put your wealth. <laughs> the heart's going to yeah. follow. <laughs> so, so you know, and it's not the reverse. You know, you can have the heart to do Yeah something finances aren't in it you know a couple dollars yeah. it will sit in the back burner because you're going to put your your focus on you know where you put your treasure and so that's kind of really interesting you know i've i he said that and i just and that's i think when i shortly afterwards <laughs> called chris and talked with chris and said yeah i want to do it because that was a great point and and because we did it we have seen a huge growth yeah in the gaming community and there's still access to the free rules we have thousands of downloads every month still people you should see the site hits i mean we still got you know even on slow months hundreds of people coming on the site and downloading the game so it's really cool i mean it's sitting out there it's kind of waiting right you know and um, i think a lot of people have their hands on it which is really neat it's just a matter of getting it on the table and that that next step of professionalism and working with Chris and Slow Death Games has really helped that a lot. So yeah, it's funny. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. It's... Let me take this opportunity to thank you again for the huge effort you put into this project and how you keep supporting the community behind the game. That's really cool. It's, it's something really great. Um, so let's jump straight into our next question, which is you know, uh, you have, we have mentioned First Grey, which we already know how passionate you have been about it, and we, we, we know that both action dice mechanics is part of this game as well. And so I, I, I was interesting to know how how much you have been playing both action. If you... so, I've got like that. This is this is my. I'm I'm in the middle of Myanmar, in the middle of a jungle. I'm in the middle of the the, the Burmese the the you know Burma jungle. And all those boxes behind me is all um, Japanese Imperial Army and the British 14th Army from, from yeah, from Bolt yeah. Action. So that's all kind of behind me there, yeah. And they've got some homes up there and all that stuff. So anyways, right. that's, you know, that's kind of my star, my star breach and my Bolt Action stuff is right there. So I, I do love Bolt Action. I think it's yeah. great. Um, I think it's a really neat way to learn history. I think it's a really, it's a really neat way to connect the next generation to... Uh, one of the most um, terrible times of human history, but also one of the most inspirational. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it, it's just a really neat way to connect. And and when I played Bolt Action, one of the things that struck me was that pulling the order dice. <laughs> I remember, for, I, I think that's for everybody. Yeah. You know, every tabletop gamer, especially coming out of, you know, the GW background, which most people do, they first watch a game of Bolt Action and they see the guys like reaching in to the dice bag and yeah. pulling out dice <laughs> and they're like what the heck is going on like what is this and then and then yeah. you're waiting for the guy to roll the die and then instead he's like looking at it yeah. and then he like sets it down and he gives an order and you're like what oh mm-hmm. my god i mean it just reinvented the die right yeah. it reinvented the use of the six-sided die Absolutely. in a really cool way yeah um which is i think that's rick Priestley, right i think he did that yeah um yeah so i mean 
you know, just a brilliant game designer. And I thought that particular mechanic was so brilliant. It's not the end all be all. I mean, um, Bolt Action definitely has its flaws, just like any game. Um, you know, so I thought that was brilliant. And then, you know, with Frost. Crossgrave, I thought what was really cool was just the really simple stat lines, um, the the very the variety of play between like magic and spells, and then like physical fighting, so like some range ranged action and like melee action. Um, there's a lot, you know, I played hundreds of games, watched hundreds of games of Frostgrave, and very quickly found its flaws. Very quickly saw the things players didn't like, um, you know, and so. You know, there were some things I loved, but some things I was like, you know, if I did my own game, I, I definitely would change a lot. And um, so I did, you know. I mean, when, when we ended up doing NCO, um, the World War II game, uh, you know, it had inspiration from both games, Bolt Action and Frostgrave, but, but is not in any way still, like, overtly flavored by either game, where you're like, oh, well, this is just Frostgrave with, you know, World War Two, or this is just bolt action on a small scale. No, no, it's it's still definitely its own its its own game. You know, and Star Breach yep. even more so. You know, it's kind of its own game. Yep. You know, the the big challenge with jumping into Frostgrave was, um, I mean, sorry, jumping into Star Breach uh, was, you know, I thought, oh well, I'll just make like future rules for my World War Two game, and it'll be easy. Um, but then I realized, well, everyone's got all these different models and I want to do like different alien factions. And then I started like doing factions, and then I started realizing like, oh my God, there are so many factions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I spent, I spent like three months at the computer just building 20 different factions, you know? I mean, it started, it started with 17 and then I yeah. ended up building three more and it probably could even expand. I've had other players like, Hey, have you thought about this yeah. or that? But how did you oh, come up with so endless, many? You know? what, what, what inspired you? How did you get to the point that I've actually 17 or, or 20 in the end? <laughs> yeah, 20 that? in the end, yeah. <laughs> well, 20 was just a nice round number. I got to 17 and I was like, well, that's just not complete. Like, <laughs> we gotta have more than that. Yeah. So, but, you know, I think the original thing, the original thing was thinking, I was just trying to go through all the genres, all the sci-fi genres I could think of. And then I was also trying to think of what models are out there that people want to use, you know, because if this is a free game, I really don't want players to show up to the table, have models in hand and say, oh, this isn't for me because I can't play with my models, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I really want it to be as accessible as possible that any, that if you open up Star Breach, you go to the Warband Anthology, you can find the Warband or at least two or three Warbands where you say, my models will fit. That'll be great. Yeah. You know, and so what's funny is because it's a it's a free game. I didn't want players to have to go out and purchase you know specific models to play. But it's funny because I know a lot of you out there, um, you know, Star Breach kind of like started this like the opposite where they're like, oh, well, I have models for this faction, but now I want I want models for all twenty factions. Yeah. <laughs> You, you know that we're gonna end up buying more. Like, you know, we, we, yeah. Yeah, it's addictive. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> that plastic it's that plastic crack, right? You know, it's like yeah. you just can't stop. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no matter how you're gonna make happy model fits, yeah. we, we're gonna buy more. That's uh, that's for sure. It's, <laughs> we'll find some yeah. reason to buy more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, it, cool. and that's cool. I think that's what's great about the yeah. game is, you know, it's very accessible for, I mean, I know players who've played with their children just with yeah. Green Army Men or like stacks of pennies um, yeah. um, and all the way to guys who have who have like really nice custom models for all 20, 20 factions, you know. Um, so cool. I think it, it, it appeals and it also is available, it's accessible to all players, you know, of different economic backgrounds and different uh, levels of hobbying, you know, I, I think that's what makes the game so fun, so great. Yeah, it's definitely uh, a strength of the game, for sure, absolutely. And uh, I yeah. think it's one of the things that yeah. the players love about it, so, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but I mean, 20 are a lot, um, and uh, <laughs> how, how did you start? Did you... <laughs> Like start with four or five and and play with them and and then improve from from that point or did you just start and grow for twenty and then start? Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, um, I kind of went with, I think I got up to like 12 or 15 and I just, you know, I decided, okay, maybe this is enough. But then as I was kind of playing with them and yeah, kind of testing different rules and stuff, I was like, you know, I'm missing kind of this faction, I'm missing this faction. And, you know, the big thing too was uh, just looking at like psychic abilities. I was like, oh, we well, definitely got to have psychic abilities. There's a, you know, there's that kind of frost grave element. And so I was like, you know, well, we got to have, you know, schools of different schools of psychic abilities. That'll be cool. Um, and that was, I think, the, the biggest challenge. You know, I could come up with the factions, but then when it was like, okay, how do I condense this so that going through just, pages and pages of fluff and like this factions all of this you know and balance and not to mention balancing all of trying to balance all the soldiers i mean there's still lots of soldiers that are yeah. op or underpowered yeah. you know that are, you know i mean yeah. and i get that you know yeah. because there's just so much it's like taking it's what it? you know gw did over 20 years yeah. of time <laughs> and doing it in like three months yeah <laughs> yeah it's insane so can't be done. So you know, it just it just it you know it's it takes time, and I and I appreciate it. It, it either takes time or it takes multiple eyes. It takes multiple yeah. layers, and yeah. so I'm really thankful for a community that is active to kind of call it out and be like, hey, these guys are op, or hey, these yeah. guys are um, you know need 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 to be fixed or whatever. That's that's important to me. Cool. And even though we've got the version one out and it's printed and blah blah blah, I mean you know you know version two is going to come. <laughs> So of of course I'm yeah. updating and and just taking notes as I listen to people's input and oh, okay yeah that's a good thing to change. Um, I'm developing a new game as well and that's I think even more exciting than Star Breach in my mind because cool. I have kind of that experience now with Star Breach yeah. where I can kind of yeah. okay I I know some things I want to cut out yeah. I don't need this anymore and there's other things I want to like put in that I think are necessary for the game to be that much more fun. Yeah. And so that new game is going to come out fresh and I think benefit from that. Whereas, um, you know, Star Breach, um, you know, it's going to, it is going to take, you know, another version or two to, you know, yeah. to finally get it to, I think a place where it's a Holy Grail <laughs> game, you know, where you just, you put it on your shelf and you say, that's the yeah. perfect game. I mean, there's no such thing, <laughs> right? But close as we can. <laughs> yeah. I understand that. But, uh, do you have still some faction in your mind that you would have liked to see in, in, in the rule book? and they didn't make it in the final. You know, um, Hunters is kind of a funny faction because it, it started kind of as like a Predators kind of faction, and then it became like a Predators and Aliens faction, and it became like a Predators and Mandalorian and an Aliens faction. Um, it was just how there's a lot of like Hunter-type sci-fi stories out there, so they kind of became this menagerie. But I think I'd still like to, someone had mentioned, and I think that's a good point, is breaking up, like, the hive a bit more. Um, you know, you kind of have, like, because there is sci-fi of, like, shooty aliens, you know, like, like kind of bioweapons and stuff. And then just, like, straight up just hunter aliens, you know, more elite, you know, spears and, you know, but they've got crazy amount of stealth and, and power behind them, strength behind them to, to get the job done. So... So I, I could see that expanding a little bit more, kind of a more like ancient race alien um, that's a little bit more, um, yeah, like just like pure pure brute force mixed with like high intelligence, uh, a little bit more elite, you know. So anyways, yeah, that, that's one that comes to mind. Um, another one is, you know, the, the ancient machine does pulls a lot of weight. A lot of people like to play ancient machine. And they use a lot of different types of models to do that. But they're, again, Ancient Machine also kind of has like a, in sci-fi, you know, uh, the multiverse of sci science fiction, you know, there's a, you know, there's a lot of ways like ancient robots are kind of depicted, you know, um, you know, is, so, so how would you, you know, work, rework that, you know, so I've, I've thought through maybe expanding on that as well. And um, yeah, I mean, just different ideas, but we've got a lot. 20s, yeah. <laughs> 20 is plenty to work with for now. Yeah, yeah, they, they're certainly not for now. Yeah, <laughs> just curious. Yeah, and yeah. Is, in, in between these 20 factions, is that a preferred one, one that you, you love to play more than others when, mm. you, get to, when you get to play? Mm. Yeah, when I get to play, one that I think is always uh, just really fun um, 
is uh, the Continuum Syndic- Continuum Syndicate is fun. Yeah, well, um, I really I really love the movie Looper, yeah. and I love just the idea of like time travel. Yeah. And I've just always thought that you know time travel is kind of lacking in science fiction tabletop gaming. I mean, it would it should be a huge part of it, yeah. right? I mean, of course different science fiction groups work with it differently and how it's used on the table is worked differently. But I've always thought just like, you know, it, it just having a, a faction that kind of is obsessed with using time, time manipulation to their advantage is just fun. Yeah. And it is, it's a fun, it's a fun faction to play. It can be difficult because they're, you know, they're not necessarily like super beefy, but they've got a lot of like tricks up their sleeves wow, that make yeah. them, you know, fun to play. Yeah, I love to play that. So anyways, that, that's it. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, and, that's and a good I think one. School yeah, of Time is something really new on the field, on on, on the hobby, on yeah. board games, and it's super cool when you when you get to disappear and appear somewhere else in in the battle place. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really neat. I hope to I hope to keep kind of building on that as well. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see the schools get you know proper like. 10 maybe maybe 10 abilities in total and kind of get those all balanced and figured out i mean i just would love to see the game expand with a little bit more options Mm -hmm. um you know in general for the war bands and schools and not necessarily fluff we never want to add fluff because that's what the players do but just adding more options you know for players um yeah well in in another video i've been talking with some other veteran uh, players about star breach and rules and whatever mm. and and i think psychic ability is something that we have discussed quite deeply because um it can quickly unbalance the game and and mm. like school of time is certainly one that is overpowered a bit uh, you know when you get to make disappear terrain mm. and and then people <laughs> fall on the floor from height it's it's quite scary yeah, yeah. <laughs> or like teleport someone yeah. in a position where you're gonna Kill it instantly because it's in yeah. the middle of the fire. Yeah. And so someone say that probably yeah, that, adding a bit of uh, distances and you know range of those ability mm. will probably improve on make it less overpowered. But yeah, yeah, I, th- yeah, I think those uh, psychic schools are really cool. But yeah, maybe do something to to manage to get it uh, you know balance. It would be it would be really uh, helpful. On long term, yeah. But yeah, it's it's super cool. Yeah, it's full of timing. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. It was certainly lacking on, on <laughs> war games. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, and you're right. I mean, a lot of that stuff is um, it just comes with trial and error. You know, I can only play test so much, and it's really good to have the community kind of play with stuff and then realize like, oh. You do that enough times, and you realize that's the only thing you want to do. You know, <laughs> so you know there's that balance. You know, there's those elements like that we like I saw when I was you know playtesting Frostgrave. You play it enough times, you know, you can always play test and find things that you know from from the beginning. You're like, oh, this could be fixed or that. But it's the it's those multiple things that keep coming up. You don't notice until you get a lot of games under your belt where you're like, well, this is the only strategy I would do, or this is the only thing I would do. Oh, okay, so then we need to, that's something we need to balance, yeah. And that, you know, it takes time, it takes players, so I'm always really excited to get that input, so, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So I have a couple of other few questions about rules, if you don't mind, after, you know, talking with Sure, don't mind at all. Yeah, Yeah. see what you think about them. Like, uh, one important thing, uh, it was about cover fire. Uh, We don't seem to use Mm. it a lot. We, we don't really see the meaning of using it because uh, with the um, other of effect uh, weapons, you, you, of, you often get the minus one instead of minus two and you get the same effect on the battlefield. So you, you hit multiple uh, enemies at the same time and it's it's quite powerful attack actually. But cover yeah. fire seems yeah. uh, not really that, you know, that strong as um, our um, weapons. So, what do you think? Is there a way in your mind of uh, changing cover fire in the future? Yeah, you know what's funny is um, cover fire has been in there from from the beginning. I mean, for, for a few years now, it's been in there. And I think the game has evolved kind of beyond its use. Like you said, you know, we got to a point where we started, I think, AOE 
you know, um, you know, area of effect weapons and stuff, I think, um, came along actually later, not, not because we didn't have weapons that did that, but because we had weapons that were defined by cover fire. Yeah. And then we kind of made a new definition, which was AOE, which is actually much better. Yeah. Um, so you're so when you play with AOE, you're playing with actually a much more updated, I think, better rule. Whereas cover fire is still there, yeah. um, and it's useful and to to some extent, but it's just there's something I gotta. I mean, I definitely need to change it. I think one thing you'll be seeing, especially like in a second edition down the road, down the line, will be. Um, yeah, down the line will definitely be um, a change, I think, to a couple of the just the main actions, like those six activation, like those six different um, orders. You know, you'll have to, you will probably see a main change with some of those orders. So, in cover fire, we'll probably have to see one of those changes for sure. Yeah. I, I don't know, I don't know if it's going to be like a. Yeah, it might just be a, an entire change, a completely different order within a different effect, um, and cover fire is just kind of built into AOE, or if it's going to be um, a slight change and then have AOE kind of combined with it. I'm not sure yet, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> because, you getting know, good feedback, though. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. It's certainly useful to put down some uh, enemy tractor while you, you're firing, and, you know, not just for killing them, but, you know, to... to suck some of the action in, in the process, which, yeah. is, which is good. But the minus two is often yeah. quite challenging, at least if you're not on the high ground, which is then compensing them. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, yeah the high ground too, I think that's one big thing. Yeah. You'll be probably bringing down a bit to nerfing a little bit yeah, in, the, in the future. I would love to, yeah, because uh, you, you, get the, <laughs> you get to a point where it's just the case of putting someone in high ground and is gonna be like a god in the game. <laughs> Plus two is quite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta, you gotta knock him down. You gotta use yeah. some uh, psychic abilities or something yeah. to get him off there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. that's right. I mean, it, it is, it is a little bit overpowered. Yeah, that high ground as yeah. well. And you got the high ground and AOE, and it's gonna be yeah. tough. Yeah. So, I think, I think a really quick homebrew for high ground is just bringing it back down to kind of a plus one. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, it's, it's, instead of a plus two, or the other thing players do with high ground is um, just um, they kind of like it would just basically negate. It doesn't give any bonus to the attack roll, but it gives the defender like a, they can't like benefit from cover, ah, you know, something like right, that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so just a very, very more of a slight change than a major like plus two to your roll, um, something like like that. Um, it might also end up giving more of a logistical bonus than an actual like physical tactical bonus we'll have to see um so yeah i'm, kind of, I'm still thinking through that yeah. as well but maybe for now just a quick quick minus one instead of minus two uh that might yeah. help a lot yeah yeah i think so it's uh something we definitely want to try as soon as we can get back to tables and and, and play together you know after covid but yeah anyway i think another another um question we had it was about Oh, we were actually a suggestion we, we come up together with other friends when we were talking about rules and it was, um, you know, instead of, um, of everybody keeps uh, the, the, the same heat and damage around the 4 inch uh, radius, you can select a, a target which is probably a, um, a model on the battlefield and that model, which is the specific tar target you declared, is gonna get the total damage while all the other in the four inch radius get half the damage you know instead of the total i think that helps a lot of keep balance and you 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 are forced to select a specific model and um yeah yeah that's nice. smart I, I i think that's a great idea i think that's a great idea yeah. I like the idea too. We we've been toying with you know kind of for cover fire and for um, well maybe not for cover fire but for AOE in particular making it that you still need a targetable model. So you've got one you're going to have to target a, you know a model yeah. and make that clear. I think it's 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 you know it's a little bit implied in the rule, but it needs to be a bit clearer. Like you know um, you should be able you know when you use that fire versus a cover fire order. You know, you should be targeting one model. 
Um, so you can't just use an AOE like cover fire. In fact, you're not supposed to. You're only supposed to fire with an AOE. Right. AOE comes from right. It's that, it's that ancient rule I've got in there <laughs> that I need to maybe remove or fix up and versus this kind of new, this newer updated rule. But anyways, yeah, you know, making sure that you have a target. And then on top of that, you know, um, I love, I, I think I really like that idea. Yeah, of kind of making the indirect fire a little bit more, um, yeah, like like accidental and not so like just intentionally yeah. just <laughs> obliterating the team yeah. and the groups. You know? It makes sense with so grenades. You know, with grenades, when you have uh, the minus one, if you don't see the model, that's a good idea, I think. Yeah, and it should be something yeah. a little yeah. bit like that when you when you try to uh, hit a, a target, but it's not in line of sight. You should you have some kind of penalties. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, that's actually not even a bad idea. Just throwing on the tapping on the minus one or a minus two modifier for everyone else in range yeah. of the blast, you know, and basically the first, the, the main guy getting it really bad and then everyone else getting hit with a further penalty, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a that's a great idea. I mean, I, I think that's that's that could be a way to do it for sure. Very open to that. Yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, the, the, this brings us a little bit to the next question, which is mm. um, cover. We don't seem to mm. benefit uh, a lot from cover because of the area of effect weapons, you know. You, this is <laughs> the same, but you, you are yeah. kind of answered before because you say that um, we should target an eligible, um, you know, uh, something you can see, not just a place in the battlefield. Yeah, because you know. Yeah, so cover yeah. fires. Covers fire specifically says you know you choose a point on the battlefield, whereas AOE weapons you know you're you're you can only you can't use them for cover fire because they kind of already have a cover fire element, but you have to use them with fire, which does require you to have a seeable target. Um, so so I think that's just something I've never really. You know, I know as the creator, <laughs> but I haven't made super clear. <laughs> so so I, I think just making that a bit more clear. Yeah. And then, like I said, with cover fire, you know, that might make cover fire a bit more attractive yeah. for other weapons. You know, you can kind of just shoot it in area. But, you know, cover fire might disappear over time, and we just make sure that you always have a target. You're always shooting at, uh, you know, an enemy, an enemy target. You can't just be, you know, blazing guns everywhere and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I still feel so, like the so, cover yeah, we'll is see. not never enough. So you you get into cover, but there are so many effects in play that ignores covers. That is almost uh, yeah. you know it, it's useless to go in cover. So you probably want to be in the center of <laughs> <behind> cover <laughs> most of the time. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's something I, in, in the new game I'm developing. Um, going down, basically, what going down is in this new game, which is not called down and it, 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 it's called another thing but um, it actually will impact where you'll basically get an additional instead of getting additional like plus two you know to your like def uh, to your dodge roll it's a it's only a plus one to the dodge roll and then it's an and then it's plus one to your defense ah. like so it so there's a there's a greater chance of getting hit so and then and then in reverse with cover I would make cover a bit stronger. So actually I'd make it more, I would give that one the plus two to your dodge roll. So it's kind of, they reverse, but dot, you know, down has a bit different effect. Um, so we're going to see that, I think, in an updated, you know, Star Breach down the road, because that's already in this new game. I've definitely worked, been thinking about the same thing with cover. Yeah, it's tricky. You know, it's tricky because, you know, and, and how simple the, you know, we I, I love that people are playing this game with their kids, uh, and I love that veteran players are still finding the game fairly strategic and fun and, and balanced to play. Yeah, but it's tough because you know I want to. There's some major changes I want to make um, that can be abused, and I want to make sure we don't we they're not able to be abused. Um, you know, but it's like, how do I? You know, what's what's the right balance, right? <laughs> you know, we don't want to go too compli too complicated to the point where players don't want to. You know, younger yep. players don't want to play, yep. and we don't want to go so. You know, we don't want to go so dumb, so easy that it's just pointless to play if you want to play something competitive. You know, yep. we're trying to find that balance, which is, which is also an art. It's a bit of an art. <laughs> so, <laughs> so covers one of those things where it's like I, I definitely want to. Yeah 
cover fire, you know, and, and as well as just cover AOE, these different mechanics, I do know they need a change. And so it's a matter of just kind of finding the right change yep. um, so that it just makes sense, but it's also not like another page of rules to, <laughs> to decipher. You know? I know what you mean, yeah. I've, I've, it's you countless know. the number of time I've been, you know, arguing with someone about cover in general, you know, in, in, mm. in the office, mm. because... Uh, uh, can you see the model? Can, can you not see the model? And then, mm. no, I can, but you, you say you can't. <laughs> and, uh, it's yeah, like, yeah, it's that tough. one's so tough, right? Yeah. <laughs> the line of sight is tough. Yeah. yeah, I think we did a pretty good job, you know, kind of defining that. You're just working up from the ba from the base up and the width, the t the height of the model and the width of the base. Yeah. And you know, I mean, even if you couldn't see, you know, a portion of the model, you know, if if you go if you go width of the base up and you know. Is, are, are they going to be occupying that space? Yeah, then they're a target, you know. But you know, obviously, a pen, you know, it's just it's how models are modeled too, oh, right? Because yeah. sometimes yeah. the guy's like leaning way out of his, <laughs> he's way out of his base. And, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it does. It does get you got to get <laughs> you got to get tricky sometimes yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's like the the crisis, the Marvel crisis protocol oh, models yeah. that are just like. <laughs> Just out of just out of control. Like the new one with dead dead Deadpool's like flying on a rocket. He's like not yeah. even centered on his base. He's completely off his base, which is perfect for Deadpool. Yeah. But at the same time, it's just like yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's like how am I going to yeah. play with this in a way that yeah. Anyways, yeah, I I can I can yeah. imagine because I've seen other uh, authors of the game uh, designing games with in mind some uh, like categories that you have like height of the model because it's an agnostic mm -hmm. model it, it, it makes sense to find some boundaries of the model because you, you don't know what it's going to yeah. be used on, on game so it, it's a tough it's a tough choice i know i know what you mean it's uh, <laughs> yeah. it must be hard yeah. i think i think secretly people like to play like halfling armies and dwarf armies just because they're just like <laughs> half the plastic so they're like Got that low profile. No, Absolutely. no, no. See him. They're just hiding in the corner, you know. I can definitely mention yeah. someone that do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we're trying to do what we can to make sure, you know, we're just making that um, yeah. as easy, you know. It, it's tough, you know. That balance is tough. But yeah. I appreciate, you know, players on the fly being smart. And yeah. um I, th I think using your head and being fair to the other player is so important, right? This is such yeah, a big yeah. part of the game. Yeah. You know, just go, just go with it. You know, and if you end up having a terrible time because the guy just was abusing every rule along the way, <laughs> then yeah. you know what can what can you do? Is that my fault as a game designer? I don't know. <laughs> maybe you, don't maybe so. you need some new friends. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, more likely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. No, but I'm trying. We're doing what we can, right? That's what I. That's that is my job is yeah. to try to make sure we don't find we find those abuses and we try to minimize them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then again, it's the cool things about Starbridge, you know, this uh, continuous improvement and changing. Yeah. But uh, let's see last of our thoughts about Starbridge and is uh, the special action phase. And I'm, I'm pretty mm. sure we have been discussing this together in the past so many times, but and uh, probably at the point that I've been annoying with you about this uh, <laughs> special action. No, no, no. <laughs> We have, you know, you know, you know. What's funny is again with the new game yeah. that I'm developing, um, we, I'm pretty much dropping uh, the special action phase altogether. You know, for this new game, and you know, I really liked the special action phase. Again, when I first put it in, it's kind of like cover fire. It was, it was really essential to the game. It had a lot of flavor, a lot of character. It made certain characters um, more interesting. Yeah to take but it got to but it does get to a point where it does bog down the game a bit yeah um one thing well you know what's funny is since for some players it bogs down the game uh -huh. but for other players um it's it makes the game super quick because uh -huh. some of the most powerful members of the war band get to basically go twice every turn yep you know, so they're just like, bah, 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 yeah, I'm just shooting, you know, and I mean, <laughs> people are, you know, done by turn two or turn yeah. three, and that's no, and you know, that's no yeah. fun. Yeah. So I think that's something that, um, again, an older rule that I think has, yeah. uh, it, it's important to, the, it's such an essential part of the game right now, but I think there's a way that I'm going to be changing that as well, where it, 
it won't fully disappear. Uh, um, but but one thing I've been encouraging players to do is um, to basically give, if they don't like the special actions rule, something I've been recently telling people is um, drop it completely and give your alpha one more of the six original actions. Uh, okay. And that's it. Okay. And and so so that's that's kind of that's that may be heading in the direction of the change that we're going to make. That basically the alpha gets one each alpha gets one final action. Uh, the player who the player who went first, yeah. the the player who's following. Yeah. So the second player gets to have his first alpha action, his special action for his alpha. Yeah. And then the second player gets his final action with his alpha. And then that's it. I mean, and it makes it makes the alpha still special, yeah. but it really cleans up. You know, it, it it really cleans up the gameplay, yeah. and I think the other thing is just it's going to clean up this whole like now you got to memorize these four other actions. Yeah. You just choose from the original six, yeah. Um, which of course I can already hear some people saying maybe you know well, well I really like you know what about ambush yeah. or what about you know some <laughs> uh, of these things. Yeah, I, I do like ambush. That. Well, uh, we were talking about cover fire earlier, so there you go. Um, yeah. cover fire might become something different so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you might see in the future um, you know like ambush becoming one of those six original uh, orders or becoming a kind of a, a meld so we got maybe potentially even like a mend or ambush kind of like a yeah like a like like almost like a prepare order yeah so under that prepare order what can you do you can mend your guy or you can set up for an ambush yeah. you know one or the other so, which also makes mend a little bit more useful. I, I think mend is actually really useful. People it is. forget to do it, <laughs> and then they're, they're 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 like, our games ended in two turns or three turns. I'm like, did you mend no. your guys at any point? And they're like, no, we didn't do that. Yeah. It's like, well, that's why your guys are dead. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Cool, yeah. And it's super useful. Yeah, absolutely. Mend is a good part of the game. Yeah, you you lose. Yeah, you lose that turn. So it's an action. You lose. But, you yeah. lose the action. Yeah. So that's what's tough. Yeah. But um, but you know it, it can be it can be life saving. Yeah. Life saving. Yeah. You know? And I think what'll be nice is um, if we you know maybe simplifying that special actions um, just down to the down to the alpha. Um, what that'll do is I think really exalt the alpha in the way that they should be. Yeah. Kind of launching them into like this is this is my character. This is yeah. my guy, and this is his group. This is these are his minions. They can die. They can they can be dead. They can you know they're cannon fodder, but he he needs to stay alive, you know. Yeah. Um, because that special action, that one action for him to take it twice, I think will be. So give that a try when you play next time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let, let me let me know how that goes. Yeah. Just drop the special actions phase. Say one extra action. Yeah. Um, and you choose any of the six actions. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe move the ambush rule to the um, cover fire, so you're allowing yeah. people to set up for ambush. At any point in the game during the the normal turn, yeah. and um, you know, and let me know how it goes. That yeah. might be really good. Yeah, so we'll cool. see. <laughs> and I think I think we should definitely keep ambush because uh, uh, you know, being yeah. in Overwatch, it's kind of part of a big strategy during the game. So yeah, it's yeah, yeah. that's good. And uh, maybe we wanted to suggest something else about ambush so that when you. Mm. Uh, you can do ambush with, you know, now you can do it only with specialist and the alpha, but if you move it to mm. the normal order uh, action, then it would be for everybody. But we wanted, yeah. to, we wanted to restrict it a little bit, and we think that maybe the unwieldy um, weapon cannot do the ambush, because you know, mm. they are mm -mm. already quite, you know, strong as a weapon. So yeah. You don't really want them to be ready to kill you. When you appear on the <laughs> around the corner, yeah, like like the a, like an AOE weapon, yeah, can't yeah. really do ambush. I mean, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, right? Yeah. Because if if you brought that to the battlefield, I think the other soldiers know about it, and there's you're, they're not going to be too, you know, if you just been blasting from this position, and then now you're an ambush, yeah. and everyone likes, oh, okay, that's fine, <laughs> you know. I think they're <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. That might be a big change yeah. as well. You know, another thing uh, in the new game that I'm developing that we're probably going to see as well that might be really helpful as well in Star Breach is we are going to see um, limits to modifying. 
Um, that's kind of a new thing I think GW just put out as well. But I've been working on it with this game, this new game I've been developing over the last year, and we've seen it more and more in indie games, and we're seeing it now. I think GW finally got into it as well, is uh, mod- modifying limits, you know, all where you're like, okay, this is this is the this is the maximum you can limit, you know, uh, uh, you can modify up to, and then you know, especially for like when you're just rolling on a basically a 3D six system, you know, 2D six you're rolling, 1D six you know, um, you're kind of banking on, um, you know, if you're working with the 3D six bell curve, um, having a limit to that, you know, to that modified number, you know, you know is it's going to be essential, I think. As I'm sure you've experienced, you get up to, well, if players, you know, can get their guys up to 10, you know, yeah. they're, they're like adding 10 to this D6, D6 yeah. roll, and you're like, I mean, that's that's already over yeah. the bell curve for, for 3D6, like, yeah. let alone just one die, you know. So yeah. anyways, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's it's astronomical. So, so we're looking at, idea, yeah. I'm also looking at potentially, um, you know, bringing down the everyone's stats in general starting a bit lower and then having a higher and then having a lower limit and so really getting closer to that that full uh, 3d6 bell curve um, with just some very occasional miniatures that can push it up to seven push it up to eight maybe eight being maximum for certain uh, modifiers you know for your dodge roll or for your attack roll Um, so we're just seeing a little bit more living not so many people dying so fast, um, <laughs> but also still, still, still having opportunity to do some knockout, big yeah. knockout punches. Yeah. You know, if you get you get the right roll, that your enemy gets the wrong roll. <laughs> it's that it's that excellent. I think that's what I liked about Frostgrave. I really still don't like the D twenty right. um, system. I think that's a, I think that's a huge mistake. <laughs> um, I've always thought it's a huge mistake. There's no reason to do it. You can you can do it easily with any other dice yeah. system, but um, but I do like both opponents um, both players rolling at all times it keeps both it's not like okay i go and you sit and watch me destroy your army and then you go and i watch you sit and destroy my army you know you get to be both actively playing and that's not just frostgrave that's uh, that's something i picked up too from um x-wing miniature game as well i really liked that kind of like uh you know attack roll and evade roll um you know that both players are active you know they're both your turn, you know, I have I have things I'm doing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm that's important. Yeah, I think uh, so. nowadays so so many games um do something about get good player um engaged all the time, like reaction or, or stuff like that. Yeah. It's it's definitely a good way of playing because yeah, Warhammer like Warhammer Fantasy Battle it was like you sit there and then wait <laughs> the the other guy do all the movement and it takes ages. <laughs> But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know and I think especially for men there's there's a visceral reaction I think that was not fun for players. There's this kind of like anger that can build up when you're just watching <laughs> this other guy bring his army and he's explaining to you how he's going to de- destroy your army. He's like, "Oh, I have this rule that you didn't know about that I get to kill your whole legion of guys right here and then there's this rule over here that I get to heal all my guys." And like you can't do anything right that's the old school like tabletop gaming and so you're sitting there fuming and, and it's not your fault it's not his fault it's just this visceral you yeah. know yeah. uh you know a natural reaction to just watching your kingdom fall apart and there's nothing you're, you can do about it you know yeah. yeah i know i know that feeling yeah so it's good i think you're right i think there's been a good evolution of gaming towards yeah you know, even if it's not your turn, you're still active. You've got some things, some choices you can make, some roles you can do that you know keep you in the game. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Well, yeah. All, um, the order dice mechanics was was already an improvement. You know, from the old world, mm. you you don't know who is gonna hack, which is good. You know, mm. uh, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely good to to be engaged all the time. Yeah, with the uh, dodging and uh, stuff. And um, so it's it's good that you you agree with special action needs some tweaking and and we definitely try that and because yeah. the, the first things we we have difficulties to 
when we explain the game to someone else and you know some somebody new that want to to know what the game is that you're gonna say well if you want to learn the game it's gonna be uh, like three hours playing because you know first time <laughs> <laughs> is already a long time to explain it and no. uh, because the special action is another turn in the turn it's, yeah it's gonna yeah be, it's a know, whole turn game. in the turn yeah. While if you mm -hmm, just activate mm -hmm. the alpha, as you say, it's gonna be a lot quicker. And if you go, if you go around two hours, yeah. game, it's gonna be perfect. That duration for a scrimmage. Yeah, I think it'll. I think it'll be nice too to get back down to just these six orders. Um, and and that'll save a lot of reading as well. You know, that'll save a lot of trying to memorize these other four special actions and what do these do. You know, if everything's contained on the dice, the six sided dice, that'll yeah. be nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Okay. You know, um, as you mentioned, you 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 writing an, another another game, and uh, I've been reading yeah. the book as you as you may remember, and uh, uh -huh. I think one of the strong points of the new rule set is that you don't have the just one initiative value, but you have different mm. initiative, which I think is is really good and some somehow lacking on Star Bridge because. Uh, if you have uh, like uh, seven initiative, you, you're like a god. You can do everything in in the game. You you, you <laughs> you're good at shooting. You're good in uh, CC. You're good at um, casting spells. Uh, you you can do pretty much anything, you know. While if, if yeah. different parameters where you can play with when you when you make faction, it's easier even for you to to find the balance in the game. So it's, I think it's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, the the. Splitting the splitting the initiatives for both um, hunters, the the kind of the co-op solo uh, a branch of Starbreach, which we're still trying to figure out what we're going to do with, um, if it's you know if it's worth kind of putting a lot of energy into, or if we're just going to kind of leave it where it is, we're just not sure yet. But it's definitely been it's definitely been at least a good experiment with um, that in the new game that I'm working on has been really good experiences and experimenting with um, expanding the stat line of each soldier um, but trying not to get to that like yeah. here's here's 10 numbers you need to learn. Yeah. <laughs> you know you know yeah. like you're like you got two pages you got two pages of fold out yeah. for the stat line you know like yeah. I mean you know it, it is a tabletop game it's not an RPG with 14 different models you know, you know per side you know yeah. Um, you know, so bring us back try, to, trying the, to figure out yeah, to the problem of keeping balance between ages and and the audience that you're trying to talk with. So that's I can see how yes, yeah. we, you you even when we try to make some changes, we want to keep it easy. So you know, to make it flow instead of overcomplicate stuff because it's easier to complicate stuff, but yeah. uh, you still want to play a quick yes. game and you don't want to bother too much with the rules. Uh, makes sense yeah 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 so that's really yeah that's something too i think we will see the stat line expand a little bit just a little bit we're going to probably split up initiative um into into two or three uh two or three different values um and then that'll be it and then the rest and then the rest will be pretty much how it's been which is good uh, I think, you know, like, you know, there's the standard of movement and armor and health, you know, you, there's not much you're going to do there, but, you know, you, taking that initiative value, I think, and expanding it a little bit more to more of like an attack, a defense, and like a psychic, um, you know, or just like a, you know, some, some games call it like willpower yeah. or whatever, will or, uh, you know, so, so whatever that's going to be, kind of these three it still keeps it really light, you know. Now you've just now you've got like six at instead of four, um, but you know, uh, or at least six stats to keep an eye on instead of the, the the main, you know, one or two. But it's not like like I said, it's not these like ten, twelve, <laughs> half a page where yeah. you keep track and you're burying, you know, because that's the thing, right? You don't want you don't want players to bury advantages in their rules. In, in their, you know, into their rules where other players can't see it quickly um, and they've just got this totally broken list. I think that was a big negative with, with X-Wing that got out of hand really fast yeah. was, you know, you had these ships, but then you had all these, like, you know, upgrade cards 
And so, of course, you yeah. can always say, hey, take a, take a look at my list. Yeah. But you're not going to sit there for two hours and, like, yeah. study all this thing. Like, like he's yeah. done, you know, you're, the other players taken, you know, two or three hours to build yeah. his list. But you're going to look at it in, like, yeah. five minutes and be like, okay, I guess that's okay. <laughs> and then you get destroyed because you don't know yeah. half the things he's brought. You yeah. know, you're like, wait, what is that? No, what does that do? Oh, no. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. I always get super bored looking at the list of other people, so I don't really bother too much looking at it. And then <laughs> that's yeah. what happened to me all the time. <laughs> get destroyed oh, yeah, by it. For sure. So, <laughs> so, so, yeah, with Starbreach, we're trying to really make sure that, you know, you can players list. It should probably just fit a page. Yeah. And or their battle scribe, like you've, like you've created, which I definitely encourage players to go check out and download. You know, they can look at it and say, okay, I pretty much... You know, I got a good idea of what you have, so, and then you have a good idea of what I have, so we can both play somewhat equally strategically, you know, and, and this veteran who's played, you know, 50 games isn't going to just automatically crush a brand new player simply because he knows all the secret rules, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I definitely need to uh, mention a couple of factions that my friends play uh, quite a lot. They, they like the fluff behind them and they would like to play more. But yeah, yeah, there, there is a little bit of unbalance in them. Like the first one, which is the uh, strong one, is the Urak. And, and certainly they, they are quite strong because they are able to shoot up to 24 times if they... <laughs> Yeah, you can shoot a lot. That's right. I mean, they're slow, they're dumb, but they do shoot too yeah. much. And I think that special, I think that special action exactly. space yes. um, is is where certain factions, especially, take off more than others. You know, we have like the path, which yeah. is a really cool. I th I actually really think the dark path and path are great little factions that have a very high psychic play. Um, but you know, by not having a by not having a mech. And mechs getting to take special actions right now, how it stands, it's yeah. just really brutal. I mean, you're going to have a really difficult time winning a game, yeah. um, you know, with the path warband just because of the mech. You know, you're going up against another warband that has mechs. You don't have mechs, and they're going to take special actions, and yeah. your special actions aren't going to be like that. They, you know, they're not going to be 12 <laughs> shots or whatever coming yeah. at your face from this Uruk warlord or yeah. whatever. <laughs> So yeah. we, you know, what's funny? We already we already nerfed Uruk Warlord Lords once. It used yeah, to be even worse. That, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, so so you know, it's a little bit easy, nicer now. But I think a, cha a big change will be the special actions. That'll really think calm so. them yeah, down a lot more. Yeah. yeah. And on regard of nerfing stuff, you, you, do you remember Inquisition when we talked about mm. it? And then you said, yeah, okay, we're gonna nerf them, and and now I'll use less a bit. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> we went we went too hard so too hard, hard. Yeah. I your feelings <laughs> and i definitely have two uh, friends that love playing inquisition and they, you know it's a struggle that they can't do it in particular with the um, other faction that are really yeah. strong like urak you, you they, they're yeah. definitely not gonna win because um the um, relics yeah. the relics they have uh they were okay when they were really strong on the faction rule when, um, no, yeah. they, they're pointless because they're one one shot uh, relic, so you, you you use them and then waste it, and they yeah. cost still a lot. Yeah. So it's you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we've got to find a balance. I mean, yeah, there, there's some like like Urox and um, Inquisition, and there's uh, there's some other ones too that we just uh, they don't come to mind at the moment. But like there's there are special rules or the relics or things that they can take. Yeah, they just need to be balanced. Yeah, um, I, I think. Yeah, and that, and, and yeah. that's okay. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just gonna yeah, take time. Yeah, I think time. part of the problem yeah, is that some faction have um, a very situational faction rule. So you know, if um, if some of the faction have um, two very good rules that you can use them all uh, all the game for the duration of the entire game while other faction have a, a good one and the other one doesn't really have a great effect on the game like some rules um, have some effect on the first turn or other rules are just in specific situation applied so yeah I think that if you could make in a way that every faction has at least one very good 
um, faction rule yeah. and the other it could yeah. be situational. That yeah, some yeah for sure. We'll have to just a little tweaks here and there, and it, it should be good to go. So you know, I think what we'll do is it, so just for players who are kind of wondering, like, okay, you're talking about all this. When are you gonna When are you gonna yeah. do it? <laughs> that was my next question. You, you know, <laughs> now now. Yeah, now now that the books, you know, now that the books out, it's been out for uh, about a year. It's coming up on a year now, which is cool. Um, we definitely don't want to burn out. Um, if we if we go if we jump to version two too quickly, you know, you do see a big loss of players. I think you see lots of interest. Um, so we want to find the balance where you know I think we'll probably hold on to version one for about another year or two years, but. What I what I do hope to do is get that free PDF and then kind of an errata for those deluxe those players who bought the deluxe version um, and do what I can without changing without getting too crazy because we don't want to just jump straight to a version two in an errata you know um, <laughs> but see but but maybe at least start to introduce alternate rules um, basically put it like a hey. You can continue playing like this, but here's something that we might yeah. be heading towards, um, and kind of allow players to be part of almost like the play testing of version yeah. two, right? Where they're like, "Oh, this is really this is going to be essential. We definitely need to see this in, in version two. Or like, "Hey, you introduced this new idea, but I don't really like it. My group likes the original. Yeah. Keep you should keep the original." So we get more feedback along the way. So it's kind of be kind of like a Arata, but also kind of mixed with like a hey, here's what we're thinking, yeah. and play play with these rules. And if you really find them better, um, you know, know that they're know that they they're going to be coming. You know, in the in a version, we'll put them in a nice packaged, you know, polished book um, later on. Nice. So that's that's the goal. I think the new I think the new game that I'm working on as well, um, not just Hunters, but this other game I'm working on as well. Um, will hopefully i think that will be released at some point hopefully this year um we, we're going to open it up for beta testing really soon so that's exciting um and it's very different than star breach thematically and it's different than star breach um in in many ways and in good ways that it needs to be for the game that it is but i think in many ways it will give a good flavor i think it will help players get excited about some of the stuff that they could see in star breach um, as well, so they'll be able to kind of play that this year in like an official format, and, and really dream towards what Starbreach could be, you know, with with those with those rules. So definitely very yeah. excited to to see this new game. I've, I've, I had a sneak peek on on that, and I can <laughs> already tell that is a really really good game, and I love it. I haven't had the time to cool. play, you know, due to social restriction, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Of course. <laughs> Because I would love to, and I know I put out the yeah. I put out the really tight little group. I was like, "Here you go," and everyone's excited, and then everyone went on lockdown. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, so much like, for play I can testing. Definitely reassure you that we were ready to play, and then we, you know, got locked inside, and we couldn't. <laughs> but we were ready. We, we yeah. you know, but that's a shame. Yeah, well, it's, it's certainly. It's, I mean, that's that's progressed well as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's cool. And it's been so, progressing well. I do get some good feedback. Yeah, love that. Yeah, cool. <laughs> what about you mentioned it very briefly about Hunter, uh, the Rich Hunter? Do you want to say anything about you know more about releasing or what do you think about it? Yeah, you know, Hunters has hit a we has hit an interesting spot. Um, so you know, we were really excited about it last year. Then we went on lockdown. Yeah, and actually, lockdown gave us some more time to look at it. And we just, you know, and some players have really posed a good question. And I, like, you know, I already, I, I really try to listen to our players and really, because you guys are a community of veterans who play games, you know, what's fun, you know, what's not fun. And, um, you know, there's some, there's some, there's some feedback that it's just, you know, Star Breach may not be the co-op solo game it needs to be, that it shines as it is what it is. And that, you know, co-op solo is, um, is nice but it's also a bit fleeting. I think, I think a lot of solo co-op games people um, enjoy or they, they've told themselves that they enjoy, but if they were honest, they would spend their time trying to beat 
the other player. They don't really want to play a co-op game. Okay. Um, they, they're happy to play a solo game, maybe, but that's a very specific type of player. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're just, we're trying to balance like how, you know, my, my writing time, what do I invest yeah. in as a writer and what do we invest in as a company? Like for, for Slow Death Games, what does Chris invest in as a company? Um, so Hunters, I think we'll get, we'll get finished, you know, someday. I mean, it's pretty much basically finished, but in a lot of ways it's not really play tested because of COVID-19 yeah. Yeah. and play and people who have been play testing are saying, you know, it just makes me want to just play Starbridge. <laughs> like, you know, I don't, I don't really want to, you know, so maybe I have yeah. the wrong play testers, you know, maybe I just, I've got guys who would just are just sick of playing by themselves and they want to go out and play with other friends, but there might be something to that, you know, and, and I'm willing to be honest with that. I'm really excited about the new game, um, and I'm really excited about some other things with Starbreach. Uh, we 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 are talking about potentially doing um, Starbreach uh, at like a at like a platoon level. So you like you will expand into squadrons and like a like maybe a vehicle or two and a monster, kind of really old school, like first edition, second edition Warhammer, like when you didn't have all these products to buy and all this expanding bloated rules, yeah. um, kind of kind of still keeping the Starbreach model and, and pretty much the rules the same, but, but, but just growing it at to up to like a platoon level. Um, so what, what that might look like could be really cool. Yeah. Chris is still trying to convince me um, to do like a fantasy breach. <laughs> Um, I know a lot of players have talked about wanting some sort of like fantasy uh-huh. version. I do think there's a lot of great games out there that already kind of cover fantasy. Um, but Joe just announced Stargrave. Um, yeah. So now I'm thinking, well, shoot, maybe I'll just, you know, announce fantasy, fantasy <laughs> breach and we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so nah, I'm just kidding. I mean, he can do what he wants, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so anyways, yeah, it's just kind of a, it is funny, you know, I've, I've kind of thought through that and considered, you know, what that might look like, but, uh, um, so so much, so much to do. There's other games. We got other things we're thinking through. I've got all sorts of ideas. So hopefully it's a long history of writing and partnering with Chris and putting cool things out. Uh, I guess because you, you're still doing it on your free time. It's not going to be super easy to, to put everything together. It's quite hard, isn't it? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, it yeah. takes time. You know, it, it, one one thing is it's writing. Yeah. You know, one thing to it, there is a very real thing is writer's block, and yeah, um, and, and the very real thing is just being inspired and then going through the motions. And you know, writing is quite a process. You know, it's it's something um, not new to me, but at the same time, at this level it is, you know, a bit more professional than I've been used to in the past. And so there's a lot of editing involved and, um, and stuff, and stuff still sneaks by you, you know, it still gets by you. And so then you're frustrated you like put it out and you're like, okay, this is, this is the definitive edition. And then, you know, the players are like, oh, I found 10 spelling errors. And you're like, ah, <laughs> you know, like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can definitely say it. So 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 you know that's frustrating. Yeah. So so it's it's a battle it's a battle sometimes, but I enjoy it. Cool. I do enjoy it. At the end of the day, it's a big part of my hobby. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Elijah. It's uh, it has been fun talking with you, really, and I hope yeah. it's fun for all the other person that will uh, check out this video. So. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, it's great. I, I this is a great channel. I'm really excited to. To check in when you put it out, yeah. Thanks, thanks, mate. Okay, I'll, uh, uh-huh. yeah, thanks again, and uh, I'll speak to you soon, I would say then. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you, Andrea. We'll see you soon, okay? See you soon.